The Walking Dead rewrite, season eight, episode one, a new beginning. Now, before you delve into season eight of The Walking Dead, make sure to be caught up on season seven of The Walking Dead from season seven, episode one to season seven, episode 16. In those 16 episodes, we delve into a lot. We keep Glenn alive. We keep Sasha alive. We keep Carl alive. We kill off Tara. We have All Out War in the back half of Season 7. We have a bunch of changes from the original Walking Dead. So definitely make sure before you start watching this one that you watch the entirety of Season 7 rewrites of The Walking Dead. Now, for y'all that have seen the Season 7 rewrites in their entirety and you know everything ins and outs of the season and you are caught up and the most recent scene you've seen is Carl and Judith saving Magna's group all these years later. Now that we know, we have a major time skip in The Walking Dead. And now that All Out War is over and we've skipped all this time, let's see how our survivors are holding up after all this time. So right now, let's get into The Walking Dead, Season 8, Episode 1, A New Beginning. We open up with the night sky. We see the wide shot of a post-apocalyptic Washington, D.C. And then we cut to our survivors inside of a museum. We see Rick, Daryl, Michonne, Glenn, Maggie, Jesus, Enid, King Ezekiel, Carol, Dwight, and a new character named Dante from the hilltop. We see them all inside of this museum and they're killing dozens and dozens of walkers. We see Rick with his hatchet, Michonne with her sword, Maggie and Carol with their bow and arrow, Glenn, Jesus, and Dante with swords, and Dwight with Lucille, taking out dozens of the dead. And Rick yells out, fall back! kills another few walkers and Maggie says, Jesus, Dante, get the rest of the supplies and take it out to the wagon. Make sure we're ready for you. Jesus says he's on it and as Jesus and Dante gather up the rest of the supplies, Rick and the rest continue to take out the dead and we see the glass floor that they're standing above starting to crack and we see Ezekiel is standing on top. Rick tries to warn Ezekiel, but it's too late. Ezekiel falls through the glass floor and the dead are grabbing at his feet. Daryl kills as many as he can. Meanwhile, Rick, Dwight, and Glenn try to pull Ezekiel back up with enough effort and they get him out. And then as Ezekiel makes it out of there, barely with his life, Ezekiel and Carol kiss and that is confirming the relationship. Then Michonne and the others finish killing the rest of the dead in this museum and the group then leave the museum and get back on their horses and wagons and leave the city of Washington, DC. We see a new Alexandria sign. We see the rebuilt church, the new houses, and then we cut to Rick waking up. We see that Michonne is still asleep and Rick, who's buttoning his shirt, putting his belt and gun on, and then he goes into the bathroom and splashes water in his face, just like 401 of The Walking Dead. Then we see Michonne is awake and she walks up to Rick. Rick says, how'd you sleep? Michonne says, like a baby. You? Rick says, uh, not bad. Michonne says, When's Carl and the rest supposed to be back from that run? Rick says, ah, a few more days. It's kind of nice having the place to ourselves for a little while. Michonne says, I just hope they're okay. Rick says, Carl's got Judith. She's tough. She said she was ready. You spent years training her how to do what you do. And plus, being out there with her big brother and joining him on a supply run, that's always been her dream for years. Michonne says, probably right. I imagine she's worshiping Carl even more than before. Oh, also, there's a meeting today at 3. Rick says, All right, gonna go see what kind of day we're gonna be having. Michonne says, Okay, see you at the meeting. Then we see Rick walk out of the house. We see how Alexandria has grown over the years. We see Rick saying hi to his people. And then we see him saying good morning to Sadiq, revealing that they helped him during the time skip and took him in. We then see Rick walking through the streets and we see a thriving community. Cut to outside the walls of the Alexandria safe zone. Carl and Judith meet up with Aaron, Eugene, and Sasha in the woods. Luke says, the dead, they got away. Aaron says, you guys all right? Carl says, yeah, we've got some company. And we see Luke and Eugene talking for a bit and we have Eugene that says stew, we make stew. Judith says they still need our help. Carl says, dad said he doesn't want any more newcomers ever since, well, after what we went through, I just don't think it'd be a good idea to bring this kind of pressure on dad. Judith says, they're all in desperate need of food, water, a place to feel safe. 
So if they don't go, I don't go. Carl says, okay, we better not regret this. Carl puts bags on Magna, Yumiko, Luke, Connie, and Kelly's heads. And then they all start walking back to Alexandria. We then cut back to the kingdom and we get to see Carol and Jerry. And he mentions how, uh, you know, she's married to the king and mother of the prince and this and that. And she's just like, Jerry. And you kind of got like this scene between the two. Now, obviously this is something that I definitely want to show in this scene. And this is one thing about the kingdom side of things that I think is definitely very important. You know, we're seeing all these thriving communities and how things are going very, very well. But it's definitely unrealistic in a story to have everything is just magically going well everything is you know just going perfectly fine so i do think that this would be a good idea for the kingdom to actually show they are not doing so well and i would have carol uh, say to jerry simply uh you know we're not doing too well when it comes to food we're not doing well we've only got maybe about a mo another month and then we're gonna have to start you know trying to figure out how we're gonna kind of get a little bit more food because the kingdom is falling apart the place is getting older and stuff like that and jerry's gonna kind of say something like well you always figure it out you know you guys always figure it out i have no doubt in my mind you know and it's kind of a nice scene between the two and then we hear a noise pop off and obviously it is the pipes now we get introduced to an older henry which i think is definitely a really really cool kind of reveal after all these years we see an older henry and we get to see ezekiel again and henry fixes the pipes and saves it once again and you know it's kind of like you can tell it's like he's done this a good few times you know just by the way he's kind of saying it but he doesn't uh, ezekiel does not like his tone and i would definitely you know keep everything here i think this is honestly perfect and it's showing how they've kind of over time taken henry in as a kind of a son type figure and i think it's very very cool now to also see a now called king and queen leading the kingdom now we cut back to the hilltop and we see Glenn picking tomatoes and other stuff around the garden. And then we see how much the hilltop has grown and expanded. Then we see Glenn's son, Herschel Jr. And he runs up to him. Herschel says, dad, mom wants you. Glenn says, all right, tell her I'll be there soon. Just gotta go help out Earl for a little while. Herschel says, all right, dad. Hey, they're back. Glenn sees two hilltop fighters coming back from the simple supply run that they were on. Both of these guys are covered in blood and out of breath. Glenn walks up to them and says, what happened? And the man says, we were out trying to clear the roads from the dead when all of a sudden, when we thought the dead were clear, there were more, and more and more and more. There's more of the dead around here every damn day. And then Glenn asks, where's Ken? The man says, we were trying to escape, but there were way too many of the dead. They were coming for us in almost every direction. We left everything, our food, the horses, and we ran. But Ken, he didn't want to leave. Not like that. Everything we had, we left behind. He tried to save the horses, and he, he got killed trying to save the horses. And more importantly, he died so we could get away. A 15 year old kid. The horses got killed afterwards and the dead tore him apart. And we saw it happen, but we had to leave because the screams, the crying for help drew even more dead. And when we both got out of there, we got out with nothing but our lives. Glenn looks absolutely disturbed and he says, oh my God, I don't know what the hell we're supposed to tell the Rose family. The man says, it's not on you, Glenn. I'm the one that didn't try enough. Maybe if I tried harder, that kid would still be alive. This is my responsibility. Glenn says, no, no, it's not. Any person that's standing here now, anybody that has survived this long, everybody has something that they are sorry for. We will deal with this peacefully and respectfully for that family. We see Glenn take the two men to the medical trailer to make sure that they're all right. And as they're walking by, we see the civilians and they all look emotional and devastated by finding out what has happened to this young kid. Because what this kid did, even though we never knew who he was, there is someone that has just died for the hilltop and it's very painful for them.
Now back at Alexandria, we would have Magna and them that are being taken in. And I would definitely have the same thing. Judith, you know, would kind of hold her hand as they kind of walk in and she would assure her safety, which definitely I think would be really cool because obviously you got to think from Magna's perspective, this is definitely a little sketch. And is this place really as good as it seems, right? So they would go inside and basically they would meet Rick. And obviously uh, this would be a huge change from the original version. However, I would love it. And I think it would be an amazing callback if Rick in particular, particular as he talks with Magna, you know, he realizes that she is a decent person, but he definitely has his, you know, kind of suspicions. And the main thing that he kind of uh, does is he asks the three questions. How many walkers have they killed? How many people have they killed? And why? And they all have different answers. Now, obviously Magna, I would have her say, you know, like, you know, I've killed so many, I've lost count. And she would say that she had to kill three people over the time. But obviously, you know, you can kind of tell like, eh, maybe it's more than that. Yumiko obviously is hurt, so she cannot answer these questions. We do have as well uh, Connie, who kind of says, like, I've had to kill, uh, you know, uh, two people, uh, both family members that I had to put down. And Kelly kind of translates for everybody. Kelly says she actually did not have to kill anybody before. Uh, and she says that, you know, they've all, you know, killed a bunch of the dead. And, you know, Luke basically says something similar. But definitely the three questions, I think, is a, a really cool idea. Definitely something that Rick used from the past to help him in the present. I just think it's something that, would really blend well after all these years to see that it's like, yeah, Rick is still asking these questions. Now, in terms of Michonne, I would definitely keep the same kind of, you know, on the edge of your seat that Michonne has in the original version. And I actually think it'd be very interesting because Rick is here in this version. So she would pick up on the fact that, she, you know, Magna seems to be hiding something. You have nothing to hide. And she would say nothing. And then she would say, put the knife on the table. And it's just like, then Rick kind of looks at Michonne because at first Rick is like, oh, okay, Michonne, like maybe you can calm down a bit and then he sees that and then rick's just like you want to tell us what this is and rick would kind of you know look at magna and he would kind of be like look we have a lot of rules here and this this is bad sign number one two more things that made me question you like this you're out do you understand me and magna would say i have nothing to hide nothing and then Michonne would reveal the prison tattoo, which I definitely think is a very interesting scene because it kind of gets everybody kind of wondering. Now, obviously at this point, things are definitely kind of tense because now we don't know if we can trust Magnus Group or not. It seems like, you know, they're all kind of nice, you know? You know, Luke talks about how he's a music teacher and we've got, you know, Connie that says her stuff. Kelly says she was in high school. We've got, you know, Magna that said she worked at a truck stop. You know, like all this stuff seems pretty darn normal, but obviously the prison tattoo kind of gets everybody wondering. Now, this is what I would definitely have for this scene as well, too. And kind of showing the council, I would have Rick, who is the main one, obviously. We would have Michonne. We would have Gabriel that's part of it. We would have Daryl, who's also part of the council, which would be different in this version, as well as we would have also Rosita, Sasha, and we would have Aaron. Now, that is the council in this version. Obviously, in this version, there are a lot of characters that are not here. Scott is not part of the council. And a lot of the council members are actually main characters in the show, which I definitely think would also be easy because I do not like how in the original version, the council is just like, okay, a few characters we know. And then the rest are just kind of randoms, you know? So in this version, the council, you know, it's not even 10 of them, but I do think kind of a group of people deciding to do what they're going to do is very, very smart. And I definitely like the idea that it shows how much Gabriel has evolved over the years. You know, he's part of this council, Rick and Michonne, obviously. And the biggest one is Daryl because Daryl being part of this council definitely shows like, okay, he definitely over the years have kind of realized like what Rick is building and he is standing right by his brother, you know, if you will. And he is being part of this council. But definitely now that Magna has kind of revealed this and the prison tattoo, it definitely gets the group wondering a little bit. Now we would then cut to later in the day and we would have Carl that is talking with Negan and we get to see Negan after all these years. He's got a buzz cut. He seems to be oddly very happy and he seems to be, you know, kind of happy as we can see that Carl is kind of doing these visits with him. But obviously, uh, you know, now Michonne is very suspicious about Magna and the group really have to kind of make a decision here. But it's kind of a wonder of what they're going to do with Magna's group. So Carl's kind of just, you know, Negan is almost kind of like, you know, when Carl wants to go down there, and he wants to just kind of vent. He kind of goes to Negan about it. And Negan almost kind of gives him always some advice, which I definitely think is interesting because obviously Negan used to be the enemy and now Carl is going down there. Now, in this scene, I would definitely have, which I think would be really cool, is that Negan would tell Carl, like, look, 
you're too soft. Like Magna, she gave you exactly a reason for you not to trust her. And he, you know, basically Carl would say like, yeah, but they don't seem like bad people to me. Like they really don't. And Negan would basically tell Carl in this version, look, if they seem evil, I wouldn't chance it. I wouldn't chance bad people within my walls. Your dad, he'll learn. He'll learn if he lets them stay. And then Carl would kind of say like, huh, so what do you know? I mean, really, you've been down here for years talking shit about the way we do things when really you've been sitting here in a cell and you absolutely failed. Tell me who's the winner here. Tell me who made the best decisions and who is the one that's sitting in the cell listening to someone that you used to call an enemy, Negan. And Negan would kind of smile at this when Carl kind of tells him off and Carl would say, I'm leaving for Hilltop tomorrow. Negan would say, for what? And Carl would say, I'm taking blacksmithing. My dad and some of the others are taking me there. We haven't been to Hilltop in ages, nor Kingdom either, Sanctuary especially. All of us are divided. All of us are all split up. My dad wants to change that. We've been so busy thriving in our own communities that we've almost forgotten to be actually be part of each other. It's been a long time since we met up with Maggie and Glenn. Me and my dad are going tomorrow. I probably won't be down here for a long time. And Negan says, well, kid, I wish you the best. And Carl would say, do you? And he would say, yeah, I do. It's good to be doing something with your life. I mean, you gotta grow up at some point. And Carl would say, well, I'm gonna convince my dad. I'm gonna convince my dad that these people are good. Prison doesn't mean anything. Not unless you're you. And then Carl would walk out and Negan would have a big smirk on his face because he just knows that Carl completely just told him off. But we can almost tell through Negan's smile that this is not the first time that Carl is talking to him like that. Now we also get to see Gabriel and Rosita and they're also skeptical. They're also still wondering. And Gabriel would say, look, Rick wants to trust them. Michonne doesn't. It should be up to them. I don't know why the council is deciding on this. And Rosita would say the same thing. Look, prison doesn't mean shit and Michonne knows it. If anything, Rick will talk her into it. And Gabriel will say, ah, maybe. And then he would say, I was talking with Eugene. And then obviously this would be the same thing. They would set up the idea to set up this relay and Rosita would offer to go. Rosita would, you know, be like, yeah, I'll go. I'll go with Eugene today. And Gabriel would be like, you sure? And then we would confirm that Gabriel and Rosita are actually together. Over the time skip, they have actually gotten together and we get that confirmation in this scene, which I thought was a very interesting twist and definitely something that uh, fans would not expect. And I definitely think that it's a scene that definitely needs to to stay in the show because I do like it and I do think it's kind of a like oh okay like that's kind of a cool idea and keep in mind you know there is no Jadis in this version so it's not like this is like right away for the viewers Gabriel has not been in a relationship in the show yet so I definitely think it also shows just how different things are after all these years and I do like it I think it's a very interesting twist now obviously we would have Rosita and we would have Eugene that go off and we see them there and he would be like you must really like Gabriel and you know they would kind of be talking and stuff and she'd be like Eugene can we just please focus on what we're doing and he'd be like okie dokie and basically we would see exactly like we saw in the show he would go up the tower and we would see as they think that the herd is going the other way all of a sudden the herd took a major turn and as Eugene tries to get down the tower he hurts his leg and obviously we get to see that and he's limping and they're trying to get away from the dead but it just is not making any sense and that's the main kind of suspicion about this scene why the hell are the walkers that were once going one way why did they all of a sudden turn around he's like hey took a major turn on the DL you know and it's like yeah it, it, it's kind of weird you know so we get to see that as they of course escape and as they try to get away now back at Hilltop we we would have Maggie and in this version we would have Glenn that are both telling Tammy and Earl what happened to their son and it's a very tragic scene and you know she would be like look I voted for you Maggie Ree but we are not friends and she would say I, I, I understand and Glenn would say look take all the time you need okay we're so sorry for what you all have gone through I couldn't even imagine I'm a father now take it from me if that was my child I wouldn't know what to do with myself I'm so, so sorry. And we would see Maggie just feels really, really bad because her and Glenn both had to break the news to these unfortunate parents. Now we would cut back to the kingdom and we would see that Carol, Ezekiel, and Jerry are gonna be going on a run and they're going to be going to go ask Dwight and the sanctuary for a little bit of help because of their short supply of food. So that is the mission that they're gonna be going on and they're gonna go and talk with Dwight who apparently, according to what they say, is running the sanctuary and they're gonna ask them if they can spare any kind of food. And meanwhile, this is happening. We see Henry who is still training even after all these years with the staff. 
We get to see Ken's funeral, and we get to see the burial of Ken, and we see the sad parents, which are Earl and Tammy. And of course, this is when Gregory would come in. Now, I wouldn't change any of this. I honestly love the way this is done. He convinces him. He completely brainwashes Earl, especially because he knows that Earl is not thinking right, so he gets him drunk, and that is what Gregory does. He would get him drunk, and he would get him to a point, and he would convince him. He'd be like, well, she's the leader, and Gregory would just slip in the little line of, she doesn't have to be. And it's just like, oh God, Gregory, what are you doing? Now back at Alexandria, we would have Magna and the group that are staying inside of this house, obviously because, well, they're still not 100% sure what they're gonna do with them yet. That is Rick and Michonne and the council. So they're staying in here. And I would still have the same thing. Magna would be very, very much kind of skeptical, especially with the way Michonne kind of doesn't trust her. And Luke would be like, give the knife. Yeah, we noticed it, you know? And I definitely think that it would be cool, definitely for Luke's character, just to show he's kind of a more just chill, kind of cool dude. He's just like, look, they got little kids here. You want to fight debate style cool you know you want to fight you know for whatever uh you know yeah do i get a yes vote on that you know and everybody would kind of raise their hands i love this i think it's cool to kind of get to know the characters a little bit and kind of see that mag magna is a little bit kind of on the edge i definitely think it's really really cool to see and i honestly wouldn't change anything about it but here is one thing i would change i would have it to where she would give the knife she would knock on rick and michonne's door but i do think it'd be cool that rick answers the door and she gives the knife the last night knife she had she's like you missed one and rick would be like look i hope we can trust you you know my my boy wants to you know say just trust you i'm not sure yet but this, this is a good start and I definitely think it's just something that would be really, really cool to see because obviously Rick doesn't know if he can trust Magna, but it's definitely good that she did this. Now, the big reveal of this episode and something that I also would definitely keep the same and how on earth could anybody pass on this? Rick and Michonne have had a little boy throughout the time skip. Absolutely would keep this in here. I think it's just really, really cool. Yeah, Carl's here. Yeah, Judith's here. But man, honestly, to have a little Rashone baby walking around honestly uh that is amazing especially because rick is here there is no way i could pass on that honestly so yes i would also have the reveal that rj is in fact in the rewrites now it would be late at night and we would see Maggie and it's kind of a peaceful evening. And obviously this would be a very nice kind of scene. It's at night, everything's going well. And then all of a sudden Earl attacks Maggie, of course, because of Gregory. And of course you would have Maggie that would get cut on the face and you would have a huge attack as Earl tries to assassinate and kill Maggie. Now in this version, absolute power couple, have Glenn come in there, have Glenn try to attack him. And yes, I do think it's realistic even though it is Glenn, Earl is out of control. And I definitely think that it would shock everybody if, yes, Glenn does get knocked out trying to save Maggie. But guess what? He still tried to save Maggie in the end. He still tried to do something. And unfortunately, Glenn got knocked out. But when Glenn gets knocked out, you know something's up. That is when I would have Jesus come in. He would kick the crap out of Earl, especially after seeing Glenn on the ground like that and seeing Maggie attack. Jesus would kick the absolute hell out of Earl. And they would take, of course, the cap off and they would notice that it is Earl. And that's when they all kind of freeze and they kind of stop. Now, Maggie would, as usual, confront Gregory. And she would say, you're too chicken shit to do it yourself. And he'd go on about, what? I built this place and all that. And she's like, you can't even murder murder someone right, which is absolutely true. Gregory cannot murder someone right. And in this situation, it would be the exact same. After this, Maggie is taking no chances. Now it would be the next day and you would have Carl and Rick that are of course leaving for Hilltop. And we get to see in this version, it's not just Rick and Carl like in the Walking Dead comics. We actually have Luke that approaches them in this and they're just like, look, uh, we know there's this other place. I mean, this place, Mr. Grimes is mind blowing, but you mind if we take a take a ride? We would love to see this place. This hilltop it is? And Rick's like, yeah, hilltop. There's also a kingdom and a sanctuary. He's like, wow, you know? And you would just have Luke that's all like, oh my God. And obviously this would be really cool because it'd be showing that Luke and Magna and all of this group are trying to kind of, you know, fit in and they're trying to actually really earn their keep in this. So I would have Magnus group that accompanies them as well now because of this, Daryl feels the need to kind of maybe go with Rick just to make sure that, you know, everything's gonna go well. So now you have a big group that's now going to Hilltop, not only to bring Carl there, but Rick's main intent 
intent here is to actually bring the communities back together for this fair. So obviously in this version, not only is Carl going for the blacksmithing, but it's really just to try to bring the communities together, also introduce Magnus Group to Hilltop. So there are a lot of reasons why there's such a big group going to Hilltop in this version. And in this version, the characters that are going to Hilltop are Rick, Carl, Michonne, Daryl, Dog is also accompanying Daryl in this one, the entirety of Magnus Group, and Sadiq, who Rick wants to bring with because obviously he wants him to keep an eye on, you know, Yumiko because she isn't still doing well. So that group is all going to be going to the hilltop to try to see if they can convince Maggie and them about the fair and also just introduce Magnus Group in general and bring Carl there. So there are a lot of things when it comes to this trip that they are doing. But as they exit Alexandria, we get a little bit of a time lapse after the exit Alexandria and as they're on the road. Now, this is when things would be a little bit different. We get to see as we reveal and we do not know where this character has been the entire episode. We get at the end, everyone that stops the wagon, Rick stops the wagon and we see somebody come out of the woods. And it's just like season nine, episode six, except this time it's Rick and he sees Morgan who seems to be very, very messed up after a good few years in the apocalypse. And we can see Rick look at Morgan, kind of give him a bit of a small smirk and say, you need a ride, stranger? And Morgan would have a small smile on his face. And it'd be cool because Rick and Morgan, as we can kind of sense, have not seen each other in a long time. Now, right after that nice moment, we would cut right back to Hilltop, and we would have, just like in the Walking Dead comics and faithful to the original Walking Dead, this is something I would absolutely not change for the world. I think it is an absolute crazy moment for a season premiere, and I think it is a very crazy moment for the Maggie character, showing how far she will go to keep threats away from the community, whether that be within or inside. And obviously, after her getting attacked and what happened with Glenn, no, she does not want to play ball. She is not messing around anymore. And we see this in a brutal fashion, just like in the show. We get to see her hang Gregory in front of everyone. Instead of Daryl be the one that pulls the cord, obviously he's not there in this version, but I think it would be an absolute crazy moment for this character. Jesus, as Maggie tells him to, Jesus pulls the cord. What used to be Jesus's most important leader at once, because you know they had no choice but to follow what this guy did. Jesus now is pulling the cord per Maggie's orders to kill Gregory in front of everyone. And they try to get the children back in bed, just just like in the original version, but it does not work. And everyone at Hilltop sees their prior leader getting completely hung and getting killed in front of everyone. And that is a huge moment for Maggie Ree. Now the final scene I also would not mess with, and I think this is an absolute perfect way to end The Walking Dead Season 8, Episode 1, where you have Eugene and you have Rosita, and I would have this same scene. It is such a bone-chilling moment, and it's a really on-the-edge-of-your-seat, absolutely crazy event when they hear, as they cover themselves in mud and they try to hide away from this herd, we hear, where are they? With the addition, do not let them get away perfect ending and a great way to end the episode. So that was the extended season premiere for The Walking Dead rewrites season eight, episode one, A New Beginning. This was a packed extended episode that was also, guys, keep in mind the 100th episode. If this was canon, this would be the 100th episode of The Walking Dead. I tried my best to outdo the original 100th episode of The Walking Dead, which was season eight, episode one, Mercy. So definitely let me know how that compares to the actual uh, season premiere of season eight of The Walking Dead, Mercy. Compare that to this episode. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below. As well, just what is going to happen now? You know, Maggie really at this point as a leader has really gone to extreme measures to protect her community and protect what she has. We've seen that Dwight, apparently, we have not seen much, but we know that Dwight is in charge of the sanctuary and it seems like they appear to be doing very well according to what Carol says. So we'll see how that meeting goes. We will also see how the kingdom deals with their situation and now how Magnus Group fits in because it does seem like she earned Rick's trust. We also know that Rick has another son, that they had another kid over the time skip. Judith is absolutely worshiping her older brother as Carl is now still in the rewrite, still a character. And we have Negan that gives him small advice all the time. But now the question is, we know the whispers are here. 
we know a new threat is coming, and that is the exact title, which leads me to my next point and my final point. Stay tuned, because coming up right after this is The Walking Dead Season 8 Rewrites, Episode 2, A New Threat. Thank you for watching.